My name is Tracy Chen, and I am the current vice president for the organization Society of Asian Scientists and Engineers at Rensselaer Chapter. And in the next hour, we will be giving a short presentation on college professionalism, followed by breakout sessions with volunteers from our chapter. So who are we? Uh, we are the Society of Asian Scientists and Engineers, aka SACE, and our national organization was founded in 2007 and our chapter was founded in 2014. So our chapter is seven years old and there are over 150 collegiate chapter members nationwide. Um, and our organization operates on three main pillar, professionalism, diversity, and community service. Uh, we're committed to prepare Asian heritage scientists and engineers for success in the global business world uh, by ce celebrating diversity on campus and in the workplace, as well as, as providing opportunities for our members to make contributions to their local communities. And so on the left, you can see is a photo of us traveling to Binghamton University for the annual Binghamton Banquet, which is a mini networking and career fair for SACE chapters in this region. Uh, and next, Michelle will talk about the different events we do. Hello, I'm Michelle. And now you might be wondering, what is it that SACE actually does? And we try to have weekly events, usually around Saturday, where we cater to our three pillars. So first is professionalism. On the top left and bottom right, you could see some of the career fairs and company inf information sessions that we had. And we tend to gear those to help our members develop professionally. And we have events such as resume review, le cover letter prep, and interview prep, where we help our members get ready for the career fair. And we also have company recruiting sessions, such as the bottom right, and where we invite companies such as Boeing, Cigna, and Fast Enterprises to come and network with our members. And next we have community service. And on the bottom left, you can see we actually went to a local farm in Troy where we help them plant garlics and tulips to give back to the community. And lastly, we have social events. And on the top right, you could see we have our Secret Santa, which is a yearly event that all our members really enjoy. Next slide, please. So now that you have learned a little bit about us and what we do, we're going to transition into a short presentation on the three essential professional skills a college student should know. We're going to cover resume, what is it and how do I write one, elevator pitch, what does it encompass and how do I present mine, and finally, your digital presence, uh, what does that mean and how can I start? All right, cool. How's my mic, everybody? Can you hear it? Perfect. All right, so let's talk resumes. Most of you probably already know what a resume is, uh, but for the ones that don't, it's essentially an extensive document typically prepared as a printable so that you can pass it out to people so they can view it while you're at the career fair and places like that. And it typically describes your professional background and any skills that you potentially have to offer to their company or their team, whatever it may be that you are applying for. Uh, it usually encompasses multiple sections that tell recruiters your most important experiences and attributes uh, in an easy to follow order. And what I mean by that is, as you notice on the slideshow, there's a bunch of sections uh, that I note in the second bullet point. And on the side, uh, there's an example of a resume. And so, uh, for example, a common layout that I myself employ on my resume uh, is putting down these particular sections in a certain order that I personally believe uh, would make the conversation easier to uh, handle, especially when you're talking to somebody that you don't necessarily know. Uh, you're going to want to tell them everything about you in as concise of a manner as possible. So personally, I like putting down my educational history closer to the top so they understand where I'm from, uh, what my major is, how long I've been studying this major for, etc. And then right below that, I like to put down any work experience I've had in the past. So this includes any part-time jobs, any internships, uh, or even project experiences that you've had, um, including during a science fair or anything like that. Anything major that will tell them 
um, that you have experience working with scientific stuff or technical stuff, or even, you know, like I mentioned, a part-time job, any of those skills. And then right after that, uh, I like to put any affiliations or any rewards that I've uh, won in the past. Um, so affiliations usually includes a club or a society such as SACE uh, that tells people, you know, what kind of interests I have. Because a lot of times um, what you tell people you are joined, uh, what organizations you are in, uh, tells them what kind of uh, interests you have. Such on campus uh, at RPI, we have a club called DBF. It's called, it stands for Design, Build, Fly. It's a very technical based club and it tells people that, it tells recruiters particularly that you like hands-on tasks as this club usually works with um, building an, an RC airplane uh, that they send to a national tournament every year. And stuff like that uh, leads into the last part that I usually put, which is my hard and soft skills. So hard and soft skills can be separated because uh, for the hard skills, we're talking a lot of technical knowledge uh, that you may have learned in the past uh, in the classroom or through projects and whatnot. Um, a lot of that technical knowledge that companies would like to know. And then you would like to tell them your soft skills, you know, maybe some languages, you know, or some good time management skills you have uh, any of those things that aren't necessarily encompassed by the overarching category of technical skills. And so with all that said, I know that this is a lot of information that a lot of you probably have to share and definitely you want to put this in a concise layout in a recommended single page especially for us college students at the moment at least um, a lot of us have limited experience we don't have really long resumes to share with people so one thing that's really important to note is when you're going to a career fair or anything like that it's important to share with people just one page instead of having them flip through multiple pages while you're talking to them uh, and with that let's go to the next slide and so here are two uh, resources that we've prepared for you guys in order to get a better look at how to build a resume or maybe if you already have a resume how to sharpen it up um, you can either use the qr code there or i will actually paste the links to these right now in the comments for you guys or in the chat for you guys so go ahead and click on those if you wish to know more um, it's really good information for future reference if you don't have one now or if you're planning to build one soon and so definitely check those out. And now I'm going to pass it off to Michelle to talk about elevator pitches. Hello, I'm back. And elevator pitches is your 30 to 60 second sell to impress employers. RPI has two annual career fairs. And what you will notice at those career fairs is that half the school is there to network with employers. So you really wanna make sure that your pitch will be memorable and leave a great impression on those employers. So what you can do to start off is to introduce yourself, your class, your major, and your career interests. This tells employers exactly what you want and employers will know exactly how you would fit within their company if they're interested. And make sure to deliver a clear, concise message to employers. You don't wanna spit a word salad in front of them that's, that doesn't get your initial point across. And while you're giving out your pitch, they're usually looking through your resume and you can point out specific items on your resume that highlights your interests and abilities. That way, in case they do miss it while they're going through your resume, you could redirect them to that point. And lastly, be confident and positive. This is your first impression that you'll be giving to employers and you wanna make sure that you come off as a well-rounded individual. Next slide, please. So another really important part of professionalism is your digital presence and how you present yourself um, online. And it's really important to present yourself professionally to give recruiters a sense of who you are and to leave a good impression on them. So one of the best, um, uh, most prominent places that you can have a good digital, pr digital presence is on a platform called LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is basically a very popular social media platform with a lot more of a professional focus than other social media platforms you may have heard of like Instagram or Twitter, for example. And LinkedIn is basically uh, on LinkedIn. Um, you can basically network with a lot of um, 
you can network with uh, pretty much anyone, for example, other students at RPI or other uh, professionals in the workplace. And it's also a very good place for finding uh, job opportunities and internship opportunities uh, that companies post there. And basically, um, when you make a LinkedIn account, um, you basically and um, you can customize your own LinkedIn profile, and that's basically uh, you can make it your own professional portfolio. So basically, what that is is you can put all the information about yourself that you want recruiters to see to convince them that um, that you're well ex that you have a good experience and that you would be a good fit for um, an internship or a co-op or something. So basically, um, information that you can put on your LinkedIn profile includes uh, any experiences that you've had. Uh, it doesn't just have to be work experience. It can also be leadership experience in a club, for example, or it could also be um, any personal project that you've worked on. And you can also um, uh, talk about, you can also uh, list your education on there uh, so that recruiters can see um, your actual educational background. And there's a lot of other information you can list on your LinkedIn profile, for example, achievements and awards that you received or courses that you've taken. And basically, like I've said, it's a really good way to um, list all of the information and experience that you've had to show recruiters who might look at your LinkedIn profile that you're well, that you have a good amount of experience and knowledge and that you would be a good fit for any job or internship opportunity. And um, Handshake is another platform um, that has a, that's uh, similar to LinkedIn in a lot of ways, except um, if you, um, RPI and a lot of other schools actually um, have um, Handshake platforms that are very tailored to uh, students who go to those schools, uh, go to that specific schools. And Handshake is a platform that RPI uh, definitely encourages students to use. And um, one thing about Handshake is that um, the Center for uh, RPI's Center for Career Professional Development has a lot of events and they often post those on there. Um, so it's a good way to find out about those. But um, similar to LinkedIn, Handshake is a good way to uh, find job and internship opportunities that um, companies post. And it's a good way to connect with other students as well. And an important note is to uh, be very aware of what you sh share on any social media platform, not just LinkedIn or Handshake, but even um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, something that you might not think a recruiter looks at. There is a chance that they do look at those to just to see your presence on those platforms. So you don't want to um, you don't want to share or post anything that's embarrassing or doesn't represent you in a way that you want it to. And Another thing that um, you could definitely consider is having your own um, website about you. Um, if you look at the top left, uh, that's actually a website um, of Wesley Chow, who is um, who is a former chapter president of SACE at RPI. And um, basically, um, having your having your own website allows you basically to just like have an entire website dedicated to you and information about you and what you've done and also how to connect with you so it's a good way to basically stand out from um, most other people who don't have their own website and now i'll pass it off to nathan who will talk about um other opportunities at rpi all right so as talked about beforehand there are lots of well two main career fairs that happen at RPI, one for each semester. The fall one is run by Nesby and Chet, the Black professional organization and the Hispanic professional organization, respectively. And it's one of the biggest ones to go to. It's really fun. You get lots of experience sharing your resume, giving elevator pitches, all the stuff that we already covered. The spring one is run by the CCPD, which is RPI's like in-house professional help place. Also, the other big one, you can go do all the same stuff and get free stuff. It's a great fun time to go to. Lots of people always show up. And then of course, our other professional organizations, there's Nesby and Shep, as I already said, there's SAIS, R1, and SWE is also another big one. They're the women's professional organization. Um, honor societies are also another great place. Those are more academic. 
the next slide. Yeah. Tracy, you're muted. 